Finally, the last thing we'll cover in this video are fat-soluble vitamins. So let's take a look here. Again, vitamins are needed in uh, decently low quantities and they support biochemical functions. Fat-soluble vitamins, these are vitamins that can be stored in the body. So let's write that down, can be stored in body. What are some good examples of fat-soluble vitamins? One of them is vitamin A, so I'll write vit A. Vitamin A is also referred to as retinol, spelled with an O here. We'll see the distinction in just a second. Within the body, it will eventually be converted to its active form, which is retinal. So let me make sure I spell this right. This is now retinal, spelled with an A. So retinol is the original vitamin A that you consume, that you eat um, within different foods, and then within the body, it's converted to retinal. What's the purpose of this? Retinal is a molecule that is a part of a other, another molecule known as rhodopsin. Rhodopsin. Rhodopsin is uh, going to be an eye pigment. So vitamin A is found in uh, very high quantities in uh, carrots, and carrots themselves will contain this retinal, and this is why we often hear carrots are good for you know your eyesight because they help promote the rhodopsin synthesis and function. Rhodopsin are uh, eye pigments specifically within the rods of your eyes. So that's its major function within the body. If you have a deficiency, believe it or not, if you're very deficient in this, it actually can lead to blindness. So we'll write that down, blindness. And that makes sense considering where it acts and what it acts on. So vitamin A, fat-soluble vitamin stored in the body. In addition, you also have vitamin D. Vitamin D is a common one. We hear about it a lot, it's oftentimes in milk. Um, its purpose is to increase calcium absorption. So calcium is one of those other molecules that cannot just be readily absorbed. It needs some help, and the help is provided by vitamin D. And if you have a deficiency in vitamin D, it actually depends on when you get the deficiency. Meaning that, let's say you have the deficiency uh, if you're a kid. A deficiency of vitamin D in kids results in something known as rickets. Rickets is going to be is going to result in overall defective bone growth. Because again, kids are growing, they're developing, they're getting taller, they're getting stronger. But if you have a deficiency in vitamin D, you have a deficiency in calcium absorption, and we all know calcium plays a big role in bone health in the uh, bone breakdown and bone buildup, the osteoblasts and osteoclasts. Remember those? Rickets is the term that we give to kids who are deficient in vitamin D that are defective in their overall bone growth. But let's say adults are deficient in vitamin D. There's a different process here because adults are done growing. Adults will suffer from another bone problem known as osteomalacia. And this just refers to bone softening. So again, that's really bad as well. Bone softening gives you the higher likelihood of bone fractures, and that's always not, that's never, ever, ever good. And so overall, we can see the detrimental effects of a deficiency in vitamin D just because of its relationship to the idea of calcium absorption and that direct relationship to overall bone health. Also, vitamin D is a vitamin that actually can be uh, absorbed through the skin. If you have the skin and it's exposed to UV, if there's skin exposure to UV light from the sun, this is actually going to trigger a skin reaction, a biochemical reaction within the skin. And this is going to result in vitamin D production. And so this is oftentimes a different type of vitamin D than the one that's consumed from foods, but it's still a vitamin D necessary within the body. This reaction takes about 20 minutes, but remember, this does not mean you do not go with sunscreen. You still absolutely need sunscreen because the UV can be very dangerous after those 20 minutes. So 20 minutes of exposure to sun helps this process uh, move forward. That covers our look at vitamin D. Finally, last water-soluble vitamin of note is vitamin K. Vitamin K is important, uh, fat soluble. Vitamin K is important in the synthesis of blood clotting proteins. So when you get a wound and you want that wound to stop bleeding, vitamin K is critical in that process of blood clotting, clotting that wound.
In addition, we've seen vitamin K before. It's actually seen uh, when we looked at digestion, specifically in the large intestine, because it's produced by the large intestine bacteria. Those bacteria that are uh, living within us, we provide them a nice home, and within the large intestine, what they do for us is they give us some rent, and their rent comes in the form of vitamin K. This is usually given to us by an E. coli form of bacteria, and what happens a lot of the times is when people consume antibiotics, Antibiotics will, are, are not going to be specific to any ba old bacteria. They're actually going to target all bacteria, whether good or bad. We have good E. coli within our large intestine that provide us with vitamin K. Oftentimes when you take antibiotics, this lowers the vitamin output, the lowers the overall levels of vitamin K within the body because of the fact that you are getting less production, lowers vitamin K production because the E. coli that are doing us good are dying as a result of this antibiotic as well. That's why you always want to follow the antibiotic regimen to a T. You never want to skip a day or do too much in one day because then you can throw off your entire intestinal flora, bacteria that are giving you good stuff just because you're taking this antibiotic incorrectly. That covers our look at vitamins. These are organic compounds. Next, we're going to look at another nutritional need known as minerals, vitamins and minerals. Those are inorganic. We'll take a look in the next flowchart.